Joshua 14. Now these are the areas the Israelites received as an inheritance in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the heads of the tribal clans of Israel allotted to them. Their inheritances were assigned by lot to the nine and a half tribes, as the Lord had commanded through Moses. Moses had granted the two and a half tribes their inheritance east of the Jordan, but had not granted the Levites an inheritance among the rest, for the sons of Joseph had become two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. The Levites received no share of the land, but only towns to live in, with pasture lands for their flocks and herds. So the Israelites divided the land, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now the men of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land, and I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my brothers who went with me made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, follow the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever, because you have allowed, I'm sorry, you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the desert. So here I am today, 85 years old. (laughs) I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. Wow, what a testimony. (laughs) I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. Wow, what great faith he had. I love that. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba, after Arba, who was the greatest man among the Anakites. Then the land had rest from war. Joshua chapter 15. The allotment for the tribe of Judah, clan by clan, extended down to the territory of Eden, Edom to the desert of Zin in the extreme south. Their southern boundary started from the bay at the southern end of the Salt Sea, crossed south of Scorpion Pass, continued on to Zin, and went over to the south of Kadesh Barnea. Then it ran past Hezron up to Adar and curved round to Karka. It then passed along to Asmon and joined the Wadi of Egypt, ending at the sea. This is their southern boundary. The eastern boundary is the Salt Sea as far as the mouth of the Jordan. The northern boundary started from the Bay of the Sea at the mouth of the Jordan, went up to Beth Hagla and continued north of Beth Ereba to the stone of Bohan, son of Reuben. The boundary then went up to Deber from the valley of Achor and turned north to Gilgal, which faces the pass of Adumim, south of the gorge. It continued along to the waters of En Shemesh and came out at En Rogel. Then it ran up the valley of Beth Hinnom along the southern slope of the Jebusite city, that is, Jerusalem. From there, it climbed to the top of the hill west of the Hinnon Valley at the northern end of the Valley of Rephaim. From the hilltop, the boundary headed toward the spring of the waters of Nephtoah, came out at the towns of Mount Ephron and went down toward Bela, that is, Kariath Jerim. Then it curved westward from Bela to Mount Sair, ran along the northern slope of Mount Jerim, that is, Kesselon, continued down to Beth Shemesh and crossed to Timnah. It went to the northern slope of Ekron, turned toward Shikaron, passed along to Mount Bela, and reached Jabneel. The boundary ended at the sea. The western boundary is the coastline of the Great Sea. 
These are the boundaries around the people of Judah by their clans. In accordance with the Lord's command to him, Joshua gave to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, a portion in Judah, Kariath Arba, that is Hebron. Arba was the forefather of Anak. From Hebron, Caleb drove out the three Anakites, Sheshai, Sheshai, Ahiman, and Talmah, descendants of Anak. From there, he marched against the people living in Debir, Debir formerly called Kariath Sefer. And Caleb said, I will give my daughter Aksa in marriage to the man who attacks and captures Kariath Sefer. Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's brother, took it. So Caleb gave his daughter Aksa to him in marriage. One day, when she came to Othniel, she urged him to ask her father for a field. When she got off her donkey, Caleb asked her, what can I do for you? She replied, do me a special favor. Since you have given me land in the Negev, give me also springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper and lower springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of Judah, clan by clan. The southernmost towns of the tribe of Judah in the Negev toward the boundary of Edom were Kabziel, Eder, Jagger, Kina, Dimona, Adada, Kadesh, Hazor, Ithnan, Ziph, Telam, Baloth, Hazor, Hadatha, Kiriath, Hezron, that is Hazor, Imam, Shima, Maloda, Hezer Gada, Hezman, Beth Palet, Hezer Shu Shual, Beersheba, Bizayathia, <laughs> Bala, Iam, Ezim, Eltolod, Kesil, Horma, Ziklag, Madmana, Sansana, Leboth, Shil <laughs> Shilhim, Ain, and Rimon a total of 29 towns and their villages. In the western foothills, <laughs> in the western foothills, Eshtaal, Zora, Ishnan, Zenoa, Engenim, Tapua, Enam, Jarmuth, Adulam, Soka, Ezekah, Sharaim, Adathim, and Gedera, or Gederathiam, 14 towns and their villages. Zainan, Hadasha, Migdal, Gad, Dilian, Mizpah, Jakthiel, Lakish, Bazkath, Eglon, Kabon, Lamas, Kitlish, Gedarath, Beth Dagon, Naaman, and Makeda, 16 towns and their villages. Libna, Ether, Ashan, Ifta, Ashna, Z ne Nezib, Kela, Akzib, and Marisha, nine towns and their villages. Ekron, with its surrounding settlements and villages west of Ekron, all that were in the vicinity of Ashdod, together with their villages. Ashdod, its surrounding settlements and villages, and Gaza, its settlements and villages, as far as the Wadi of Egypt and the coastline of the Great Sea. In the hill country, Shamir, Jatir, Soka, Dana, Kiriath, Sena, that is Debir, Anab, Eshtelma, Anim, Goshen, Holon, and Gila, eleven towns and their villages, Arab, Duma, Eshan, Janam, Beth Tapua, Afaka, Humta, Kariath Arba, that is Hebron, and Z Zior, nine towns and their villages, Maon, Carmel, Ziph, Jetua, Jetta, Jezreel, Jokdiam, Zanua, Kain, Zibia, and Timna, ten towns and their villages, Halhul, <laughs> Halhul, Bethzer, Gedor, Marath, Beth Anath, and Eltakon, six towns and their villages, Kariath Baal, that is Kariath Jirim, and Reba, two towns and their villages. In the desert, Beth Ereba, Midin, Sekaka, Nibshan, the city of Salt, and En Gedi, six towns and their villages. Judah, 
could not dislodge the Jebusites who were living in Jerusalem. To this day, the Jebusites live there with the people of Judah. Wow. Joshua chapter 16. The allotment for Joseph began at the Jordan of Jericho, east of the waters of Jericho, and went up from there through the desert into the hill country of Bethel. It went on from Bethel, that is Luz, crossed over to the territory of the Archites in Ataroth, descended westward to the territory of the Japhlethites, as far as the region of Lower Beth Horan, and on to Gezer, ending at the sea. So Manasseh and Ephraim, the descendants of Joseph, received their inheritance. This was the territory of Ephraim, clan by clan. The boundary of their inheritance went from Ataroth, Adar, in the east, to Upper Beth Horan, and continued to the sea. From Mikmethah, on the north, it curved eastward to Tanath, Shiloh, passing by it to Genoa on the east. Then it went down from Genoa to Ataroth and Neroth, touched Jericho, and came out at the Jordan. From Tapua, the border went west to the Cana Ravine and ended at the sea. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the Ephraimites, clan by clan. It also included all the towns and their villages that were set aside for the Ephraimites within the inheritance of the Manassites. They did not dislodge the Canaanites living in Gezer. To this day, the Canaanites live among the people of Ephraim, but are required to do forced labor. Joshua chapter 17. This was the allotment for the tribe of Manasseh as Joseph's firstborn, that is, from Machir, Manasseh's firstborn. Machir was the ancestor of the Gileadites who had received Gilead and Bashan because the Machirites were great soldiers. So this allotment was for the rest of the people of Manasseh, the clans of Ab 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 Abizer, Helek, Asriel, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemida. These are the other male descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, by their clans. Now, Zelophehad, son of Hefer, son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, had no sons, but only daughters, whose names were Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Terzah. They went to Eleazar the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the leaders, and said, the Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brothers. So Joshua gave them an inheritance along with the brothers of their father, according to the Lord's command. Manasseh's share consisted of ten tracts of land besides Gilead and Bashan, east of the Jordan, because the daughters of the tribe of Manasseh received an inheritance among the sons. The land of Gilead belonged to the rest of the descendants of Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh extended from Asher to Mikmethah, east of Shechem. The boundary ran southward from there to include the people living in en Tapua. Manasseh had the land of Tapua, but Tapua itself, on the boundary of Manasseh, belonged to the Ephraimites. Then the boundary continued south to the Cana Ravine. There were towns belonging to Ephraim, lying among the towns of Manasseh, but the boundary of Manasseh was the northern side of the ravine and ended at the sea. On the south, the land belonged to Ephraim, on the north to Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh reached the sea and bordered Asher on the north and Issachar on the east. Within Issachar and Asher, Manasseh also had Beth Shan, Iblium and the people of Dor, Endor, Tanakh, and Megiddo. Together with their surrounding settlements, the third in the list is Naphoth. Yet the Manassites were not able to occupy these towns, for the Canaanites were determined to live in that region. However, when the Israelites grew stronger, they subjected the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not drive them out completely. The people of Joseph said to Joshua, why have you given us only one allotment and one portion for an inheritance? We are a numerous people, and the Lord has blessed us abundantly. If you are so numerous, Joshua answered, and if the hill country of Ephraim is too small for you, go up into the forest and clear land for yourselves there in the land of the Perizzites and Rephaites. 
The people of Joseph replied, The hill country is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites who live in the plain have iron chariots, both those in Bethshan and its settlements, and those in the valley of Jezreel. But Joshua said to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, You are numerous and very powerful. You will have not only one allotment, but the forested hill country as well. Clear it, and its farthest limits will be yours. Though the Canaanites have iron chariots, and though they are strong, you can drive them out. <laughs> That's a good word. <laughs> they just need to believe. 